At ngayong gabi po ay makakasama natin. And this evening, joining us as part of our virtual audience are some of our brethren from MCGI Makati City Chapter. Our representative is there, Brother Wilfred Rivera, at the Parada Covered Court in Barangay Pio del Pilar, Makati. Good evening to you, Brother Wilfred. Yes, Kuya, a million thanks to God. Kuya Daniel, and this time, the brethren from Amor Solo, Makati City had the good opportunity to do good to our poor fellow men in Barangay Pio del Pilar. With the mercy of God, our brethren from the MCGI Makati City Chapter will continue to serve God and happily participate in every good work. A million thanks to God. Kuya Danielle, back to you. Thank you so much and greetings of love and peace to all our brethren who are with us in Makati City and also those if, who are there for our virtual audience. They are with us so that in a humble way, we will be instruments so that the goodness of God will reach our fellow men and also our brethren in different parts of the world the Members Church of God International. Keep on shining and keep on caring. We will go back to them later as we continue to reach out to our fellow men. Part of this is our invitation this coming January 30. We are going to open another batch of indoctrination sessions. This is a study of the doctrines of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are inviting you to weigh, to compare the many things we are going to discuss about the doctrines and commandments of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because in the Bible, there is a mention of the many things that we should understand if we want our life to be according to the law of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, like the essence of the true religion, is it really mentioned in the Bible about religion? Because this is connected to our religion for it not to be in vain. Because if we did not control our tongues, we're thinking we are religious. As it says in James 1, 26, If any man among you seem to be religious and bridles not his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is vain. There is a significance of the things. How are we going to speak so that we can say that our religion is not in vain? And this is part of the righteousness stated in the Bible. It says in verse 27, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Let us study from the righteousness in the Holy Scriptures. There is a pure religion. Because if we are not going to study these things, we might think that religion is nothing or that all religions are the same or that we don't need religion. Speaking of the Bible, and we are going to examine it. And if we believe in the Bible, there is a pure religion in the Bible. And this is part of what we're going to do. We're going to weigh and compare what is the pure religion 
yun ay huwag mawala ng kabuluhan. What is the way for our religion not to be in vain? As it says in verse 26, this man's religion is vain. So there will be something we need to do so that our religion will be meaningful. What is the way for us to worship God? Because there are many different things which implication is worship of idols if we are not going to study the things that should not be done and the things that we should do. And so the Bible says, mortify the things, the components of or members that are above the earth. It says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 5, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. There is a worship of idols. It will be considered idolatry if ourselves are mired in fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness. So we are commanded to mortify or to kill these things. How are we going to do that? What is the righteousness stated in the Holy Scriptures? So that we will not be imputed with idolatry. Different things of faith, like the right behavior. What is the right behavior or attitude for a father? Because it says in Ephesians 6 verse 4, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And so there are doctrines that will discipline a father according to the words of God written in the Holy Scriptures. What are the things contained here? For you as a father or as a husband or a married man, what are the things we should do for us not to violate the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ? Because it also says in the Bible, husbands, Love your wives. This is also a law. Ephesians 5.25 Husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Now, what love are we going to dedicate or devote for our spouses? And how will it be according to the Word of God? Because that is a righteousness written in the Holy Scriptures. In the same manner, women are also like that. The wives, if we believe the Bible, it says we should submit to our husbands. It says in Ephesians 5.24, As the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. How are we going to do that? And who is the man to whom we will submit ourselves? And how can we do it according to the law of God? It's the same thing with the children. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, 1, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. How about respect for father and mother according to the Holy Scriptures and not only according to our standards as human beings? How is that obedience to parents in the Lord? 
All these things are contained in the doctrines of our Lord Jesus Christ written in the Bible. It is so good to study it if we're saying that we believe in the Bible, that the words of God are written in it, the things that we should obey so that we will be able to do the statutes for Christians because there is a behavior that we should follow. As it says in 1 Timothy 3.15, But if I tarry long, that thou may know how men ought to behave themselves in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. So there is a behavior that is going to discipline the members of the church. There is a discipline as to how we should behave in the house of God. So these are the main things of faith that we are discussing in our Mass indoctrination. And so we are inviting you. This will happen on January 30, 2023. That is a Monday, 7 o'clock in the evening Philippine time. So be the ones to compare or to weigh things. Open your Bibles for us to see what righteousness is stated there. And let us study if this is really written in the Bible. And what should be our thinking so that we can say that we submit ourselves to the law of our Lord Jesus Christ that we should follow. Because it is not only the listeners or the hearers that are justified, as St. Paul said in 2.13 of Romans, for not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. So it is only right for us to obey the law. But how are we going to obey if we don't know? How are we going to obey if we don't understand? And so there is righteousness being shown in the Bible so that we can do it. And it was commanded by the Lord Jesus Christ to teach it. It says in Matthew 28, 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. So the observance of the law is important. We should know how to do it. What are the commandments that we should follow? We're going to study them. And with this, we're inviting you to the discussions of the issues of life that you can watch in our programs on you and TV 37. And also, in our different social media platforms, we have our MCGI channel. Please like, share, and subscribe so that you will be updated on our activities, including our outreach programs that may be happening in your locations. And you can avail of our public services. And that is open to all, regardless of your religious affiliation or political affiliation, skin color, language, nationality. If there's any way we could serve, this is part of our faith. The doctrines of the Members Church of God International, which we believe is part of our obligation as people who want to serve God and wanting to do the will of God. So together, we help one another. We brethren from different parts of the world so that we can fulfill the parts of righteousness commanded by our Lord Jesus Christ. Because it is those who obey the law that are justified. If there is a law or commandment to love our fellow men, 
if we see our fellow man in need and there's something we can do, let us not withhold the good that we can do. As it says in 1 John 3.17, But whoso has this world's good and sees his brother have need and shuts up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwell the love of God in him? So what are we going to accord to our fellow men will not be in vain because that is part of what is stated in the Bible. It says in the in Proverbs 19.17, He that has pity upon the poor lends unto the Lord, and that which he has given will he pay him again. So what we are going to expect if we have learned to give mercy to our fellow men, which is a blessedness, according to Matthew, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy, and many other things that, with the help and mercy of the Lord, the members Church of God International are striving to help one another to do so that we can fulfill the law of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we are once again inviting you, all our countrymen and fellow men, please join us so that we can study and you will hear the doctrines of the Lord Jesus Christ that we believe in. And check if you are going to benefit from it. And I know that with the help of the Lord, if you believe in what the Holy Scriptures say, you will understand our intention. Please join us and listen on January 30, Monday, 7 o'clock in the evening, Philippine Standard Time. This is also translated into different languages. We have 20 international languages wherein you can hear the doctrines of the Lord Jesus. We're also doing that in different countries through different translations. Locally, we have eight local languages. For our fellow Filipinos who speak those languages, we trust that with the help and mercy of the Lord, you can join us. You can accommodate our invitation. We have no evil desire against anyone but to share our faith, the Word of God that is written in the Bible. Be the ones to read. And if you want to have your own copy of the Bible digitally, we have our digital Bible. Our digital Bible is free and you can download it. Even if you're on Apple or Android or Huawei, we have an App Store, Google Play, and App Gallery that you can use so that you can download the different versions of the Bible. You will see the different translations there. And we hope that you could use it in your study of the words of God. Let us open our Holy Scriptures and you can check the things we are saying. We're also showing it on our screen so that you could follow. With the help and mercy of the Lord, we trust that we will be together in our upcoming Mass Indoctrination. And we are also serving our fellow men through our digital cleaning. If you have problems in health, this service is for free. You can call these numbers of our digital clinic. You can speak with our doctors to consult them about your problems in health. You see, it has been a puzzle for people regarding rain. But did you know 
that the water cycle was discovered. It is no longer new, but it is a knowledge that even before was already written in the Holy Scriptures. Have you ever wondered why seawater does not overflow? Or why, if there's always rain and flooding, it goes, it subsides? This is because of what is called water cycle. It is the endless process that connects all of the water on Earth. It is known to us that water is considered one of the key ingredients of this life. In fact, 75% of the world or the earth is composed of ice or water, including the different bodies of water. Because of the science of hydrology or the study of water around us, man has discovered the process of water cycle. In 1580, Bernard Palissy, a French potter and scientist, discovered the modern theory of the water cycle. He said, Rainwater is enough for water to continue to flow in rivers. But what processes are in the water cycle? There are three processes that continue take, to take place. Evaporation, condensation, and precipitation. Evaporation happens because of the presence of warmth from the sun. Liquid particles from the earth become gas, and later on, water vapor. Next is the process of condensation. From water vapor, which is in gas form, it becomes liquid, and clouds are formed. And the last process in the water cycle is precipitation. From clouds, it will, or water will fall back to the earth in the form of rain, snow or hail after this the process will happen again evaporation condensation and precipitation so the water cycle is non-stop but did you know that even before science discovered the water cycle there was already something written in the bible about it let us read genesis 2 verse 5 and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. The Bible is very scientific. There was no field or a plant or tree in the field. For the Lord God has not caused it to rain. There was the sun but no rain, so no plant will grow. What happened? Let us continue to verse 6. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. So what made that cloud or mist go up? The sun. There won't be the process of evaporation without the sun, right? There was the process of evaporation because of the heat of the sun. Because all this is salt water. So how can you water the earth with salt water? So there should be evaporation. Water will be taken from the sea or oceans through evaporation. When it evaporates, there's no more salt in it. And that will fall down as rain to water the earth. And so plants will grow. In science, that is called the water cycle. And we are going to know the other things, how authentic the Bible is. We are inviting you, you can watch that on our MCGI channel, and that is part of our discussions, so that we can trust in the righteousness stated in the Bible, things that even before they were discovered by science, they were already written in the Holy Scriptures. If earlier we were talking about the righteousness 
about the things stated by the Bible, the behavior that we should have. You know, the Apostle Paul said in his letter to Timothy, He who does not nurture his own is worse than an infidel or an unbeliever. Let us read 1 Timothy 5.8. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. It is evil if we don't take care of our own households. And so we asked around if in the opinion of our countrymen in taking care of their households and families for them, what is the right way of raising children? Listen to their responses. And what are the other things stated by the Bible about it? For me, in raising children, they need guidance to the right path, to guide them to the right way, even when they are studying and until they grow up, so that they would not be bad, they will be good parents. In my experience, I want to always watch over them, guide them, for them to grow in the right path. I'm not strict concerning my children. Whatever advice I can give them and they follow, it's okay. Fine by me, I am not strict. Because I know that if you're strict with them, the more that they will disobey you. If I speak to them, well, a little reprimand, they listen. And then they grew up with respect. Even now, they use po and opo. Until they got married, they don't go against their parents. And they always worry about me. They check on my situation. Like now, they are already married. But they're always thinking of me because I raised them up with the right behavior. So even if we're living separately now, they're still thinking of me. And they don't like other people doing bad things to me. For me, the right way of raising children, don't yell at them. Tell him or her if what he's doing is right or wrong. If there's one thing he does not understand, there's no need for him to cry or to wail. Tell him to, to do the right thing. If he wants something, he should tell me. They should use po and opo as a sign of respect and to kiss the hands of their elders. No one should be cursing around her or him. Especially at the child's age, he easily adapts the words of the people around him. Now, if he hears bad things, just tell him, don't Say that word. It's a bad word. Of course, the right way of raising children is to teach them good behavior. 
a teach him about holiness and respect for parents. While he is young, teach him good behavior, good manners, so that when he grows up, he will be respectful to his fellow men, to fellow youngsters. Well, with the right discipline, you need to rebuke him when he's doing something wrong. So that he will learn that what he's doing is wrong. Since he's still young, don't hurt him, just teach him. If he does not follow, then you can spank him. So that is the right way to raise children. He should learn respect. That which is written in Ephesians 6, 4, it says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Children are being taught the nurture and admonition of the Lord. For you to teach your child the nurture and admonition of the Lord, well, for you to teach him, you should be the first one to learn. You cannot teach your child if you don't know what you're going to teach to him. So that gives the responsibility to the parent that you should be the first to learn the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Because that's where you're going to raise your child, in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So from their childhood, they should be taught. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Meaning, in their youth, you are already going to teach them the doctrines of God. That is the right way of raising or rearing children and no other. Raising children is not sending them to school. You're going to borrow money, do shameless things just to send your children to school or to college. But you didn't teach him the doctrines of God. So when your child finishes his school, he's going to do unpleasant things. He may have learned from school, but he did not learn the doctrines of God. Parents make their children experts in the wisdom of men. But you see, men should learn to acknowledge God. Now his child believed, Hey, mom, we came from apes. You should teach your child from his young age that he became human being. We became human beings because we were created by God. And that is written in the Bible. It's not true that man came from the evolution. That man came from the Big Bang. That there came, the world came into existence because of the Big Bang. If you're going to teach your child only those things from school, he will even be misdirected. Well, send your child to school, but with that, teach him the doctrines of the Lord for him not to be misdirected or misled. That is the right way to raise children. And once again, our invitation, you can watch that this coming January 30, God willing, the many details of the doctrines of the Lord Jesus Christ. What are the commandments of the Lord Jesus that we should follow or obey? What are those doctrines? We are going to discuss them at the start of our mass indoctrination. Once again, the Members Church of God International, or MCGI, is inviting you to our mass indoctrination. In January 30, 7 o'clock in the evening, Philippine Standard Time. This time, let us watch the story of faith of the couple who are members of the Church of God International who had problems with wine and drugs in their relationship, but they changed and became good when they heard and believed in the Word of God.
1986 noon. My grandparents were Catholics before they converted to born again. They brought me there and I became a member of their youth ministry. My wife and, start, and I started living together in 1996. Our marriage was okay, even if we were still young, when we got together. We came to have three children. I was a tricycle driver at that time. In 1999, he had many vices. There's alcohol and cigarettes. My fellow tricycle drivers taught and encouraged me to try many vices. Particularly the use of the drug called shabu or meth. I got addicted to it. My toughest enemy then was his addiction to drugs because he almost couldn't give us money. It's already late and you're drunk again? I'm not drunk. Ryan. You can't even do your role as the pillar of this home. What do you mean? I'm supporting you. I'm very tired of this. Will you stop? Lord, please have mercy. I hope that he'll change. I could say that during those times, I was an irresponsible husband. One time, I was in my tricycle. Before me, at the terminal was brother Monico Makatangay. I wondered why he was always bent over. Onik, is that a Bible? Yes, I'm a member of the Old Path. Oh, the Old Path? Is that Brother Ellis raised the roof? Well, that's really because I have not seen Brother Ellie preach at that time. Until he invited me, it was only during the indoctrination that I got to see Brother Ellie. So the will of God in heaven, that's what the inhabitants of the earth will follow. I'm telling you that heaven is not separate from the earth to a person who acknowledges God and wants to serve God. There is a will from heaven that he must obey on earth. I really wanted to change that time. I forced myself to change. I changed for one week, two weeks. The longest was three weeks. After that, I went back to my vices. With God's help and mercy, in the year 2000, I saw a big change in him. Early in the morning, when I picked to see what he was doing on the first floor, I saw Brother Ryan reading the Bible. I told myself, Huh, my husband's gone crazy. All of a sudden, he's reading the Bible? What's gotten into him? I saw him read the Bible almost every morning before he went out to make trips with his tricycle. He started to always provide for our expenses. So I said, my husband seems to be changing. I thank God that I attended the indoctrination. With God's mercy and help, I was baptized. I also invited my wife to be or to join the church. At first, she refused. Ma, we have another opening. Please don't ask me yet. I still cannot wear what they wear. I don't wear skirts. When there was an opening of the indoctrination, I decided to join the church because I saw the big change in him. With God's mercy and help, there was no turning back. We were able to follow. His vices were gone. Smoking, drinking, alcohol, and drugs. Which caused families to break up. Until we went together to attend services. We were serving God together at that time. When I joined the church, I became a member of the choir 
And in 2007, I became a local deaconess. Thanks be to God, I came to be a local choir coordinator and a local deacon. I am Brother Ryan Santiago, and I am Sister Cheryl Ann Santiago, and this is the story of our faith. Thanks be to God. Please try to listen and watch our Mass Indoctrination. You can check what the Holy Scriptures are saying. And that will be on January 30, 2023, Monday, 7 p.m. That is at Philippine Standard Time. And with the trust that every person has innate goodness, for us to continue to promote love for fellow men once again, we conducted a social experiment. This was not a scripted, but it is the natural reaction of our countrymen in our social experiment. And this is for us to feel in our hearts the feeling of doing good. What is the feeling when we do good? And together we are going to do this to help our fellow men watch the reaction of our fellow men in our social experiment. Sir, I'd like to ask for help. Sir, I don't have money. Sir, my child has nothing to feed on. Ma'am, good evening. Could I ask for help from you? Because I have no money to pay for this. I'm sorry. Ma'am, please have mercy. My child has nothing to feed on. Ma'am, I'm sorry. Ma'am, good afternoon. I'd like to ask for help because I don't have money. I really need milk for my child. Oh, it's okay. Let us pay it with this, okay? Just You need just one? If you need to add more, it's okay. Oh, is that okay? Yes, it is. You need it more. So just add how much you need. I feel pity for her. I really felt pity for her. She was asking for help because she needed it. For me, I don't want people to experience struggling. 
So, even in a little way, I want to help. It was only milk, so it's okay. I know that she needs, really needs it. Even if it's little for you, it's already a great thing for others. Thank you very much, ma'am. I did experience not receiving help, so I don't want others to experience that, so I do good to others. Good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to ask for help. Uh, hold on, I'm going to make my purchases first. Sir, thank you. It's a sharing of blessings. The Lord gave it to you. You got well or something. So, share a part of it. Actually, you can afford those things. I could buy my own car. So, in some simple ways, pay it forward. Good afternoon, ma'am. I'd like to ask for help. I have no money to buy milk. Oh, charge to me what she needs. Is this all, Mrs.? Yes. It's okay, we'll just pay for it. Why don't you take two? Mister, she's going to take two packets. Please get one more. I need only these two. Well, she looked like she really needed it. We also came from nothing. So we know the feeling of being needy. Everything's okay now? Ma'am, sir, thank you so much for your help. Well, if you receive blessings, share them. Maybe you are at the bottom now, but you will get through it. If your fellow man helped you now, then do it also to others. Pay it forward. I'm good afternoon. I'd like to ask for help. I have no money to buy milk. Thank you, ma'am. Well, sa ating kasi mga Pilipino, it's it's part of our for us Filipinos. It's part of our culture. We're very hospitable to such people. If you have enough money to buy that, why not share it? If you could afford it and you could give to those who have nothing, like if you see a child straying in the streets or or somebody asking for help, you need to give to them, why not? You know that you need to help that person. You don't need to be told to help that person. Do it voluntarily. Do it willingly. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good and not think evil. 
of our fellow men. All of us have the obligation to do good to all. For example, there is a beggar. Let us read Matthew chapter 5, verse 42. Give to him that asks of thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Give to him who is asking from you. There's a beggar for you to fulfill the law of God. Give food to him. Buy food for him. You see that he's a beggar in ragged clothing. Give him a shirt or give him slippers. Give him something that will benefit him. Buy him food. And so you are able to follow the commandment of God. Feed the child. So you were able to follow, give to those who are asking from you. That is how we relate with our fellow men. We are going to do good to all. And this time, together with the Members Church of God International or MCGI in Makati City, some of our brethren in our virtual audience are with us and while others are outside so that together we can reach out to our fellow men. Brother Joshua Antonio is with them together with our brethren from the MCGI. Brother Joshua, good evening to you. Yes, Kuya. A happy evening from Makati City. With us are our brethren from the Members Church of God International or MCGI. With the help and mercy of the Lord, thanks be to God for the good opportunities being given to us. And that's what our brethren grab the opportunities to do good to our fellow men. And this morning, we had a short program for some of the residents living in Barangay Pio del Pilar. We invited more than 200 residents. We had a short program so that they will be special for them. We fed them delicious food. And all those who attended earlier were given grocery items. This will somehow uh, augment their daily needs because we know that in this time, prices of commodities are all going up. So these are times, instances, opportunities given by God for the members Church of God International to do good to our fellow men. Those are only some of the public services that are continuously being done by the MCGI wherever we may be in the world, not only in the Philippines but even abroad. And this evening with us are the residents of Barangay Pio del Pilar. They are among the poorest of the poor. When they arrived, the brethren from the MCGI gave them food right away. So, everyone who is with us this evening will be given grocery items. This is from the MCGI. So, those that we invited today, may this be able to help them somehow. Because we know that the residents who are here with us have no jobs. Others are just collecting scraps and selling them. Now, the brethren from the MCGI learned of the need of some of the residents here. Let us interview one of them, Mrs. Maria Fe. Good evening. This is from the MCGI. Thanks be to God for the opportunity. And this is for you. Well, thank you. 
Apart from that, we are also going to give wheelchairs to three of them. The brethren from the MCG, I learned that they really need the wheelchairs. You are taking care of someone, right? He is not your relative. Yes, we're just helping the person because no one will take care of them. No one is uh, giving him food at the right time. So we told him to stay in our house so we could monitor him. He, or he really needs a wheelchair. So thanks be to God. Thanks be to God for the residents here for allowing us, brethren from the MCGI, to do good to you. Thank you to the MCGI for the help that you give. Thanks be to God for these opportunities. We can really say thanks be to God and the brethren believe that the doing of good will not result in anything evil. And the doing of good is not an option, but an obligation that should be fulfilled by our brethren. In, in all those good opportunities that God continues to give us. God willing, this will continue because MCGI cares, MCGI shines. We are proud, MCGI. We love you, Kuya Daniel. To God be the glory. Thanks be to God. Back to you, Kuya. Thank you. And to all our brethren in Makati City, keep on shining, keep on caring. To all our brethren in different parts of the world, may God bless us all. Thanks be to God and to all our brethren and fellow men, wherever part of the world you may be, if you find coordinating centers of the MCGI, and if there's any way we could help you, please accept what we can afford to give, whatever may be your religion, political affiliation, skin color, language you speak. If there's anything we could do, we want to be humble instruments of the goodness of God to reach you. Now, our brethren needing help in Kawit Cavite were visited by our brethren from the members, Church of God International. Free groceries, food, and medical checkups were received by our Cavitenya fellow men because MCGI cares. It is really a huge help for those like us. Take, for example, groceries like that, which you give along with medical assistance. It is a great help for people like us. If we go for a checkup, we need to pay for the doctor. Then we have to purchase medicines. You have a prescription, but you don't have the money to buy medicine. It is wonderful because the poor like us couldn't afford to consult with doctors. They're able to help. You are able to help. So we are truly thankful.
Papasalamat po ako sa ating Panginoon. I am grateful to our Lord that our village people were given the opportunity, especially those who need medical attention and those who are poor who couldn't afford medical treatments. I am grateful to God because there are those like you who are prepared to help the poor like us. Many thanks. I am grateful to God because He is there in times we really need Him. He does not forsake us. He gives us light for people to help us. We should not get tired of what we are doing. Why? Is apparently part of proclaiming the honor of the one who called us. If, for example, you felt mercy, you did not afflict the person, you gave him relief, you helped the needy, we are able to proclaim the honor of God. That's why the one you have said, thanks be to God. He used you as instruments. You are able to reach us. So whose honor is it? It is the honor of God who called us. Once again, we are inviting you to our upcoming Mass Indoctrination on January 30, 2023, Monday. Together with all our brethren from the MCGI, we are inviting you to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. You can also use our MCGI Digital Clinic Hotline. It is open or available 24-7. If there is any way we could help and you have problems in health, you can speak with our brethren doctors. And with that, once again, we are thanking the Lord for all His kindness and for all the good opportunities that He is giving us together with our brethren from the MCGI, those with us through our virtual audience and those who are outside to reach out to our fellow men. Thanks be to the Lord for your continued participation and cooperation. To all the members from all over the world, the members of Church of God International are giving thanks to God because we become little instruments so that His goodness will reach our fellow men. All glory, honor, and praises remain to be of God forever. On that note, we're going to leave with you a song that proclaims the great love of God for us all. With the rendition of the song, You Are the Love, here is Brother Abby Operario. Good evening. Thank you very much for watching.
Napakaraming alaala nitong bahay na ito. This house holds so many memories. But thanks be to God, we made it through the challenges that came. Salamat po sa Diyos. Thanks be to God for the songs that serve as reminders and that give the light and hope. Salamat po sa Diyos sa mga magulang na bigay. Thanks be to God for the parents He gave. We will never forget their teachings to us. Pangarap makasama buo 